my zone. Please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Let me let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Please don't. Well, 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 is this thing on? Yes, hey, welcome back to Crown's Kiddo Cave. Having a nice little uh, start to the Saturday morning over here from uh, Helsinki, Finland. Very dark, very, uh, actually not so cold, but I do want to wish you well. Uh, if you're coming back from a late night, having all sorts of dirty drinks, dancing on tables, doing whatever the fuck that you do on a Friday evening, which is, <laughs> for me, sleeping at like nine. <laughs> but uh, but hey, if you're coming back from a late night, want to welcome you. And uh, if you're waking up for a nice morning, uh, early morning cup of coffee with uh, with myself over here in the Eastern uh, Hemisphere, well, good fucking morning, man. Anyways, uh, we got a lot to talk about today. I want to follow up from yesterday's uh, yesterday's analysis, we hit our upside target. So now what to expect over the weekend, which is typically some bullshit price action. Um, also, big announcement with the website, which we'll get into in just a second, but I do want to remind myself to talk about Twitch early on in this video, because typically I forget. And uh, we've been doing Twitch live streams every day, really long live streams, like uh, three to four hours typically long. I'll be definitely be doing one uh, later today as well. They've been extremely enjoyable. I want to say massive thank you to everyone who's been coming out because it's been just so much fun uh, building the community over there and getting to know everyone. And uh, and of course, it is 100% free and uh, just on a different venue than YouTube. So if you've been missing the live streams, that's where we've been doing it. Although I will say that it's less focused on Bitcoin, less focused on cryptocurrency. Kind of the idea with it is to get away from analyzing shit tons of shit coins. One of my New Year's resolutions was to no longer focus on shit coins um, unless of absolutely 100% you know, forced to. Um, uh, and and so far, so good. So you know, we, we do a little bit of analysis uh, in there, but it's kind of at the the background the for the foreground is is about gaming of course and so it's nice to like have uh the focus not be fully on charts um but have bitcoin in the in the periphery and then also watch you know a few other charts as well and then play some games and we get some community uh, some community you know games going on as well which i'm really looking forward to perhaps today we might we actually we might actually even be playing elder schools today so i'm really really excited about that anyways um on to the website here so uh, I'm just going to go to the live stream right now, and uh, the website has been 100% revamped, actually. We have a new engine, new everything, and really, 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 really excited about this. So I actually want to read um, I want to read exactly out what's what's been done. Uh, we had a complete switch of, techs, uh, of tech and platform. We have built our own user API, so no more of this, you know, waiting bullshit. It's much, much faster. The experience is much better. Uh, we have made a deal with professional video, video delivery host and switch our uh, video player. So videos should now be working on all browsers, all platforms, no issues with that, which I'm very excited about. Um, also, uh, <clears throat> let's see, um, okay. Yeah, other than that, I also want to announce that uh, the indicators are back. And so we switched up to a subscription model uh, per month. I'll just hit it up right over here. And as you can see, we got uh, we got three different tiers. The basic tier is just the Crown Trading Stochastics. That's 20 bucks a month. The professional tier is the Crown Trading Stochastics plus a Crown Trading RSI plus a Crown Trading Fibonacci. That's 50 bucks a month. And then the jewel tier is 300. Um, and of course, again, we decided to go uh, into a kind of a, like a monthly uh, schedule for that. Um, the reason being is because it just makes a lot more sense and we also kind of wanted to clamp down a little bit on the access to it. So uh, for the people who already have invested in, in the Jewel, um, you will notice that you have access to it now on the website if you are logged in. And for the people who are looking at these subscriptions, this is really, really important here. Really fucking important what I'm about to say because it's going to make your your life and also our lives a lot more easy. Um, if, you are, if you are considering getting into these, wh whichever one it might be, make sure that you make an account here first uh sign up do all that good stuff and then once you sign up you'll see uh some so, uh, a, a tab up here sorry my some in my eye fuck. uh um you'll see a tab up here that says some like profile and in that profile put in your trading view username and your discord username because uh, whenever you get into any one of these you're going to get uh you're going to get access into the uh, discord uh for the jewel um and you're also going to obviously get access on trading view for the indicator so we need to have that and uh and it's going to make the process a lot more smooth um so yeah um other than that i think that's about it uh really excited to be bringing that back because i know a lot of people have been interested in it and uh, i'll make an official announcement monday i know that most people are kind of just you know not really doing too much on on the weekends or not focusing on this bullshit on the weekends and that's all good man so um yeah I think that's about it. Uh, pretty fucking exciting, man. Um, anyways, uh, the Crown Trading app, which again is going to be 100% free for the base format, should be coming out uh, another like week, week and a half or so, is what uh, is what I'm being told right now. And then uh, it's not going to be full functionality at first. In fact, actually, we're going to be slowly but surely uh, adding functionality over time. Um, and what else? I feel like there's one more thing. 
Um, yeah, if you are, if, if, if you've already invested in any one of the programs and for whatever reason, your website isn't working uh, all that well, or sorry, on the crowntrading.net website, the experience isn't, isn't working all that well, just reach out to us and, uh, and, we'll, be and we'll be happy to help. Um, we now have Elsa on board and she can uh, answer emails, uh, Elsa at crowntrading.net. So definitely send her some dick pics and also the questions. So there we go. <laughs> She's looking at me very weird right now. Anyways, uh, looking at Bitcoin right here. Um, Bitcoin on a daily. We did actually close yesterday as a as a bullish engulfing dildo right here. However, I would say that I am still a little bit um, I'm still a little bit apprehensive on price action. Now it is a weekend, um, so that means that CMEs and GBTC are not trading. Let me just make sure that it's going well over here. Okay, cool. All right, great. Yeah, so CMEs actually did close above the 21. They did close they did close as a uh, as a bullish engulfing as well. However, we have still failed to make a higher high even on CMEs. So I am still apprehensive with this price action and going down into the lower time. On Bitcoin, I do think that we actually make another stabby stab higher here. Bitcoin seems to be flagging out at a higher level. It does look to me like we probably do get another uh, short-term rally back up somewhere around 7450-ish region. So yesterday we said that uh, we were likely to rally up. The areas of interest in no particular order were like, well, obviously particular order would be you know price, um, but 7350, uh, 7450, and then 7550. Every every hundred bucks up essentially. Um, but now, because we've had uh, this last day's of price action, you know, set in stone, um, I do believe that we have a few things uh, to be aware of here. So to me, this looks like we're kind of flagging out right now. Probably do get another test higher. It looks to me like lower time frame oscillators are going to give another, you know, uh, have, have just enough juice for another leg. Perhaps here's your three hour Stokes. Here's your four hour Stokes. Um, here's your buy hourly Stokes. You know, all kind of flipping around. So they're getting tired here, but I do think that we probably take another, you know, another move up. Um, it looks to me like we're kind of constructing a little bit of a symmetrical triangle right here on the lower term time frames, something like this. And uh, measure move on this would be. Yeah, probably somewhere right around that next 70. Yeah, right, uh, right around this trend line. So, man, this is competing trend lines right here. Let me explain. But first, I just realized I completely forgot to talk about something. Um, with all of the indicators that I just spoke about, uh, we're actually going to be redoing some of the videos for them. So uh, if you do get into the program, you know, in this next like week or week and a half before we've uh, made the new videos, understand that they will still be operating off the old videos, which the information is still relevant, but the presentation might not be as uh, as crystal clear as um, as we're as we're going for in the next iteration. So again, no rush on that. Anyways, um, as it stands right now, you know, symmetrical triangle on the lower term time frames, uh, break above uh, 7370, or even just a move above this last prior high at about 7400. And yes, I would target a move up here towards this next trend line somewhere right around about 7500-ish region. Um, if we do break to the downside, I would be looking at which would be marked by, uh, like, what what time frame is this? This is an hourly, actually. Um, an hourly delta close below the 21 exponential moving average, which is, which is currently a little bit of below 7300. Then yes, I would look for a move back down here towards uh, a little bit below 7200. So 100 dollar move uh in the cards here uh whichever way i do actually kind of lean to the upside in the lower term time frames but here's the thing i'm not really married to this whichever way that we break from this formation is the way that i'd be going with and uh, it does look more constructive to me although um, a lot of the times you get barts within that region to be fair as well anyways my point is is that uh there's a few obvious things going here right so I'm going to leave it on the uh, three hour for a second. Um, in the three hour, we do see that this trend line that's been getting our last few highs since December 2019, or sorry, December uh, 23rd of this of, of the past year. Uh, holy shit, man, that's crazy to say now. Um, you know, has been our, our has been getting our last few highs pretty damn accurately. You know, getting this high right here, getting this high right here, and then more recently, you know, this little slew of highs in this region right here. But this consolidation at a higher level, you know, typically is more bullish than not. And with low time frame momentum also is really, really beat up. I do think that it's likely that we get another wick up and then probably get rejected somewhere in this region here, somewhere in this region here, which would still be making lower highs on a daily, of course. And I should, I, I've started off with the lower time frames here. We'll get to the higher time frames in a little bit. I want to first say that higher time frames have really not changed at all um, as, it, as it stands. So, um, and then this next trend line, and sorry, remember, this would be kind of meeting up with this area right here, which is around the three hour, three, seven, seven exponential mean average, which has been getting, you know, all the highs in the same area, essentially. And we'd be meeting another trend line, which was actually made on a daily, I believe. Yes, it was. 
coming in from my past few highs right here. And that would essentially be synonymous with that. Also in line with the daily 55 exponential moving average. So I think anywhere between about 75 to 75, 50 ish region. Um, I want to be deliberately clear with this. I am not trading this myself. I have no interest in trading this right now. I do not trade on the weekends for the most part, unless if it's something like incredibly obvious. And uh, right now, I, I mean, we're still in a downtrend, obviously, but weekend price action, you know, is typically contrary to the week's action. So if we actually do move up here and test around 7,500, I would say that that is, uh, you know, it's likely to get rejected by end of weekend and we probably do resume uh, coming into next week, but it's really, really early to say anything like this. And uh, now we'll kind of go on to the greater picture, which has, you know, been, been unchanged still. And, and this is just so fucking beautiful right here, the two day, as we've been saying, you know, we got the move down to about 6,900. We caught that. We said it didn't have, it likely didn't have enough momentum to break. You know, I'm not going to say that I called a bounce from there up to here. That's, you know, that's, that's just the next piece of price action that I wait for essentially. Um, but the range holds essentially, and that is why I focus on these higher time frames. So the three seven seven exponential moving average to the downside, right around sixty nine hundred, as long as we don't break that, we have no resolution on this as a descending triangle to the downside. By the same token, as long as we're living below the twenty one exponential moving average on a two day delta closing basis, which we do close one tonight, yeah, later tonight at seven pm Eastern time, um, then we still are operating off of lower highs. And uh, as you can see, it's actually got our high once again. Um, so if we do break to the downside of this, which for right now is looking a little bit less likely because we're further away from it, um, below sixty nine hundred on at the very least a daily delta close, preferably a two day uh, maybe even a 12 hour could work then uh, yes we could make a measure move all the way down here towards uh, 6100 ish regions where that kind of point towards it also is in line with our descending trend line that's been holding up all of our lows for the last uh, six months since january or sorry june july essentially of 2019 and uh, would be synonymous or sorry also in line with our 2018 lows uh right in this lower six thousand uh six thousand dollar territory so somewhere between about 6100 6200 ish region and also if we do throw on the volume profile we will see that uh we have some pretty thick AF nodes coming in this region as well. So a lot of structural things lining up with that if we do break to the downside. But right now, I would not expect that to happen, especially on the weekend. Um, what I expect to happen on the weekend is just filling out the range more or less and some stop hunts probably to the upside. Um, by the same token, to the upside, speaking of, if you are bullish, what you're looking at this as is not a fucking inverted head and shoulders. For the God's sakes, I do not I do not understand where people are getting this idea. It is not an inverted head and shoulders by any stretch of the imaginations, to be 100% clear. You can, and, and here's the thing. This is being a complete TA autist on my own side. I'm a fucking autist autist with with uh with technical analysis and also pretty much everything else and this is me saying um excuse me actually it's not right the shape is wrong the structure is wrong uh, the volume signature would be right but that actually marks it off as a descending brawny wedge more than anything so also a bullish pattern has a pretty damn similar uh measure move but for the people but you can know but you get but you get a damn good insight into who knows what they're talking about who doesn't know what they're talking about because anyone who calls this an inverted head and shoulders is just is just flat out wrong um but uh, but it is a sending brawny wedge, so you know a very very small change within that. Um, but it has to do with structure, has to do with um, has to do with the overall well the neckline as well. It's just uh, it's just atrocious. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, you know someone someone like got, someone wanted to get into like a massive argument with me yesterday about about this being a head and shoulders and it's like and he just kept on pestering the question like but why isn't it head and shoulders why isn't it inverted head and shoulders it's like it's the same same question as asking like why is a fucking dog not a horse because it's not <laughs> it's just not the structure is wrong and uh i mean where's your fucking neckline here it doesn't make any sense but it does make sense that it's sending brawny wedge which typically does break out to the upside contrary to a descending triangle which typically breaks out to the downside and both of that means very little because i've seen every pattern break out every which way however those 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 ones do typically have a pretty damn high uh, hit rate in that you know uh uh uh, estimated direction. Anyways, uh, looking at this as a descending, um, as a, a, a uh, as a descending brawny wedge, uh, I have it charted out right in over here. We would see that any sort of a daily total close, especially above the 55 exponential moving average, which is also above our uh, late December highs at about 75 50 ish region. Then yes, a mesh move pointed us all the way up towards uh, this blue box territory right here between about 84 to 8,500 likely does get initiated. Not going to happen at this, at the, you know, drop of a dime or snap of a Martin's fingers right there. But, uh, <laughs> but those nano, man they're fucking hanging low right now and uh overall you know just like our measure move to the downside would be in line with our bottom side support our measure move to the upside would be in line with our long-term downtrend resistance which would be coming in currently uh in the mid eight thousands essentially and we do see that the white 200 moon average is going to start to curl down in line with that probably over the next month or so um which funnily enough speaking of the next month i do think that we get resolution on this within the next month as well 
as we do have an apex coming in on this volume signature coming in uh, around uh, early February, which does imply that somewhere around 65 or 75% full, which would be like middle to late January this month. Uh, so in a couple of weeks, two to three weeks, I'd say is extremely likely to break. And you know, that again, that doesn't tell us direction, but it does tell us that we likely get resolution on this, whether it's sending triangle or descending broadening wedge um, around a little bit later this month. Um, so I still stick with that. Um, I do believe that uh, historical volatility percentile also agrees. Um, if we look at the greater whole, in fact, this is historical volatility percentile on a daily. And so this is going all the way back to our highs at 14,000. So this speaks more to the channel, the greater channel, which I'll actually draw on right now. In fact, let's just extrapolate that out. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, so this would this this would like uh, uh, sorry this would suggest that longer term we get the breakout out of this falling channel, this long term one, which typically do break out to the upside. If we're talking about statistics here, again, not always, but we likely get resolution on this somewhere around here, somewhere around April, I'd say, uh, March, March, April-ish region. So we still got a long time to kind of live within this region, um, whether we break out to the upside or the downside. So uh, we're not, you know, I, I don't think that we're reversing the trend anytime soon uh, to the upside. I don't think that we're like falling flat through the floor anytime soon to the downside. I think that we're just going to be ranging and likely playing between these two major, major areas uh, for the foreseeable future, meaning the next two to three months. Um, anyways, uh, going back into Bitcoin, um, did I talk enough about the lower? I think I, I think I kind of already uh, got the lower timeframes um, or sorry, let's actually talk a little bit more about them. I do want to say a few few words about historical volatility percentile on these timeframes. We are redlining on the very low timeframes, like an hourly. And I think uh, the two the two hours getting up there as well. It's actually still kind of expanding. Um, but what that tells me is that this can Consolidation is, you know, is it's 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 likely going to take a little bit more time. So whether we do get another wake up or wake down, we're probably going to you know be ranging within here, um, you know, over the weekend essentially over the weekend. And I wouldn't expect the the next real direction to be revealed until we get the next week of trading. So for that, we have to go over here to CMEs because remember they are closed for the weekend now, and they kind of closed on a rejection of this region right here. And keep in mind, we are still holding lower highs even on as low of a time frame as a four hour, which means that we're definitely holding it on a uh, on a daily as well. Now we did get above the yellow. 20 minute country average for the first time in a very long time. And yes, we did close as a bullish engulfing dildo, which I do think holds quite a bit of weight. So the way to trade this, in my opinion, um, and of course, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, but the way that I look at this, um, for example, is that uh, when we get CMEs opening back up, we have a very, 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 very easy trade. As long as we are closing dildos above the 21 exponential moon average, you know, technically I actually should be looking a little bit up here, um, but we are still constructing lower highs as long as we're below about 7750-ish region, which is pretty much in line with the 55 right here. And if we kind of make a corollary between that and spot, it'd be the same areas that we spoke about earlier. Um, by the same token, if we get any sort of a daily dildo closing below the 10 cents, Simple, uh, which is about 7,200 and CMEs have a, I, I think about 60 to a hundred dollars premium on, on spot price action right now. Um, so I'd be around 7,100 for spot. Uh, then that would be a pretty damn big warning sign that we are going to be going lower or at least retesting the prior lows. And at that point, you know, this is just going to look like another failed attempt. Um, so here's the thing, you know, market sentiment is right now bullish. I don't feel like the market is very bearish actually. Um, now I think that we all live in our own echo chambers, of course. So um, so, so I could be wrong on that. I think that it's kind of hard to gauge sentiment, especially in this community, because anytime that we post a sentiment poll, it's like dead fucking even, which is a good sign of the community, man. It's, it, it shows that we have a well-balanced community, which is really, 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 really good. Um, whereas like other ones that I look at are typically like just drastically bullish or drastically bearish. Um, but uh, I don't, you know, a, a lot of people are kind of comparing this area here to the bottom at 3,100 about a year ago. Um, and I think that that's, you know, just due to sentiment alone, um, kind of unlikely. Um, anyways, looking at this, we do have the death cross fresh in line um, on, uh, on daily CMEs, but realistically, we need to go back to spot to kind of do the daily uh, rounds on this one. You know, overall, all major moving averages are still, are still bearish here, to be fair, but we can rally up to the 55 and be completely fine. Still going to hold the downtrend. Um, we do see momentum also to still coming down here. Daily Stokes been getting rejected from the same region ever since uh, September. Um, it's getting all these highs from 10.3, uh, 9.5, uh, more, more recently right here here and then more recently uh, coming down right here so 
weakened action again i do want to caution against i'm not trading this right now um, i have no intention to trade this and uh and that's that uh <laughs> anyways going over here to the 12 hour um this is this is also interesting we, we do still have 12 hour stocks being resilient in this region i think that this is important and it does kind of make my bias a little bit more shaped up to the upside especially over the weekend um if we do get a test a little bit higher that's completely fine um now same thing for the 12 hour if we as long as we're closing 12 hour totals above the 10 simple at 7200 on spot again this is um, I do think that Bitcoin likely does test a little bit higher, probably around 7,500-ish region, give or take a few bucks. Uh, we do see that 12-hour uh, jewel is not doing anything. I thought it was going to be lining up, but it is not. Um, we see a sto uh, historic volatility percentile on the 12-hour contracting quite a bit here as well. So we are winding up for a decent move, um, but I don't believe that the move gets revealed until the next trading week, essentially. Uh, 10 hours also been getting a lot of things right as well. Um, we The good thing is that we don't actually have any hidden bearish divergence in play on any of the higher time frames right now. Um, it, it won't be possible as it currently stands. Yeah, 10 hour and 12 hour not showing any. And of course, it, that means that the daily is not going to be showing any as well. Um, so this actually does, you know, if Bitcoin is going to put, uh, put in like a, a, you know, a short term, medium term rally from this region, this would be the region to do it from. Um, very low time frames, even like a four hour, actually no, no, uh, no hidden bearish divergence here uh, either. Now we are kind of, you know, riding this trend line, but mm, Fair enough. I mean, this would essentially be a descending channel, which again, typically do break out to the upside. Anyways, um, enough of that. Uh, my point is, is that there, you know, this is, this is actually one of the first times in a while where I do think that it's possible that Bitcoin could really make it, make another leg um, to the upside. So areas of interest to the upside are going to be about 75, 75, 50, and then 76, 50 right here um, in line with this long-term downtrend resistance, uh, that we've been, uh, basically held below ever since, uh, what was this 29th of November in this whole consolidation in this region, this chart's getting very convoluted. I do apologize about that. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Anyways, uh, what else do we want to talk about? Um, 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 Let's go back to the two day here. I want to speak a little bit more about this. So yes, you know, if the two day does start to close two day dildos above the 21 expansion moving average, I do think that that would be a pretty big change of behavior. We haven't done that since basically the fading of like above 9,000 essentially. And uh, momentum also is here looking like they might even want to turn back up at the bullish control zone. So if Bitcoin does close above, especially like 7,400 today on spot, um, that's going to make things look a lot more rosy uh, at the very least for a test higher into the 75, maybe 76 region. Uh, two day are RSI is okay. It's okay. It's kind of in a rising channel itself. <laughs> Two-day historical volatility percentile, very much crushed as well. Don't have much of a trust that higher read, though. I think it works a lot better on the lower time frame, especially with my settings, um, which, you know, it's fair enough. Um, we do have a two-day uh, death cross looming, though. Now, what I would say about this is that if you see Bitcoin approach the 200 exponential moving average right here, which is 77.50, which I think is going to get blown through if we actually close above like 75, 75.50-ish region, which I'd really like to see on a day, not uh, on a weekday, not on a weekend. If it is going to play through, um, then th then this death cross can be a fake out, and we're probably going to, and, and I'd feel very very confident about it moving to the mid 8,000s, 8,500, very very likely, I think, um, potentially even a uh, potentially even a full on reversal. But remember, a full on reversal, I will not call, and, I, and we had a good conversation um, earlier this morning with one of the guys in the uh, program chat. I will not call a full on reversal until we get a weekly higher high and higher low. And to get a higher high on the weekly, we need to get back above about 9,500. So it's not happening anytime soon. Bitcoin can rally up all the way to 8,500, a, a more than a $1,000 rally from our current price action, and it would still not change the weekly trend, which the weekly trend, the weekly trend has been your friend and may the trend be with you, my friends, because the big thing about the weekly trend is that anytime we've had a reversal on it, that's all of your major massive moves. I'm talking about this guy right here. I'm talking about this guy right here. I'm talking about this guy right here, this guy right here, this guy right here, this guy right here, and this guy right here. All of the major moves pretty much marked by a weekly trend reversal, which means that I will never call the ultimate low or the ultimate high. I, uh, I, I pretty much pulled out most of my money out of Bitcoin at 16 and a half thousand right here, not 20,000. I, I did not, uh, long at 3,100 right here. I longed at about 3,900, 4,000 right here. I did not short at 14,000 right here, even though we kind of did think it was a little bit toppy, but uh, I remained bullish overall due to that strategy. And, and until we broke the, uh, the lower lows at about 10, three right here. So that's the relevancy of all of that. Anyways, at the current moment in time, there's a whole discussion going on. Are we looking at higher lows on a weekly right here between this guy and this guy? You know what? You could you could make the argument for it. I don't 
care though. It doesn't matter. My point is you need both components, a higher high and a higher low. So you ain't making higher highs until you get back above here. So it's, it's irrelevant to begin with. Um, people who are arguing over this, it's just, it's a waste of time because it's, again, I love being a TA autist as well, but um, <laughs> there's actionable things and there's not actionable things. And it's just like, okay, we need, we need to do one plus one before we get like a billion divided by a hundred trillion quazillion multiplied by calculus divided by statistics, you know? <laughs> anyways, um, anyways, okay, cool. Um, 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 I should mention that, uh, the weekly 21 also looming even below that 8,500 target at 8,200. So we still got a lot of work to do, but the biggest bullish case for Bitcoin, in my opinion, right now is the fact that Bitcoin seems to be correlated with gold and could Bitcoin pull a gold off this region right here? It actually does look pretty damn similar to be fair. Uh, so this is Bitcoin, obviously, on a weekly. This is gold on a weekly. So you see this this long form kind of uh, falling channel right here. This was actually a bull. This was a proper bull flag. And we actually hit our upside target of 1550. Nice. I, and I actually do think that this travels more. Ultimately, I think that this gets above 1600, probably somewhere into the upper echelons of this blue box territory, like 1615 region. Um, looks pretty damn good. So, you know, could Bitcoin do something like this? Yeah, I think possible. And again, the reason why I'm coming up with this is because, uh, you know, according to the correlation coefficient, which is going to do a much better job of explaining this than I can, um, exactly what it sounds like, uh, we see that Bitcoin is possibly correlated with gold on a weekly. On So the weekly trend, the long-term trend is possibly correlated. So when gold rallies, Bitcoin typically follows suit. We see weekly uh, weekly on, on gold, it's very bullish. Weekly stokes, massive up, very erect. Weekly RSI, really, really like this one as well. Um, both of these really good reads make its way to the bullish control zone very very nice not only that but i'll take this one step further and really piss off the crypto anarchists for a second here but uh, let's go to traditional markets for a second let's go to a monthly because the monthly is, is the right one to get the trend on traditional markets and what do we see here we see that we are positively correlated on the monthly on the macro traditional markets and bitcoin are positively correlated in fact we can take it even another step further but i'll leave that for tomorrow because that's a long-term analysis day for now i'll just focus on this and uh and what we see here is well extremely strong monthly so we would expect that bitcoin over the long term you know, maybe not on, not on a day-to-day -day basis, not even on a month-to-month -month basis, but on like a, you know, two to three month, like quarterly basis, we expect them to actually, you know, operate similarly to each other. And this one just had a massive breakout, massive fucking breakout. I do not understand why so many people are bearish on this. It is quite normal to, uh, to, to fall a little bit into the new year. I mean, shit, man, this one can fall back all the way to like 315, 313. And I, I think that that'd be completely fine. I'd still be bullish on it long-term, short-term, medium-term, you know, it can change around. But as long as we're above like 3, 313, especially 310, I don't really have any reason to be like bearish on this long-term thing that we're talking about. This literally just broke out. I don't understand why so many people just want this to fail. It's, it's very, very strange. Anyway, same thing here on, on, on monthly RSI. Very good. Breaking out to the upside, uh, ba uh, uh, back into the uh, bullish control zone. And again, you know, over the long term, these are correlated with each other. So I would say that that is also that also bodes well for Bitcoin long term. Could it be that Bitcoin bottoms out of this region? Yes, I, I think a legitimate possibility. Um, a legitimate possibility but again there are things that i need to see happen before anything else and that is make a fucking higher high on the daily that would be a great start preferably on a weekday not on a weekend because well it's always gonna be back in the back of my mind but for now um you know things are looking like uh we pro probably over the probably over the weekend test a little bit higher again i'm not super married to that what i would be going off of is the uh is the low time frame uh, formation right here which is still looking constructive um so fair enough and bitcoin seems to be very very correlated with bitcoin so that's good <laughs> it's good to know <laughs> anyways um let's see we've already been speaking for like 30 minutes jesus christ man uh so we pretty much looked at traditional marks we can kind of cover them up a little bit more um I don't have a super strong opinion on traditional marks right here. I do think that it's possible that we actually do pull back a little bit further. Like I said, it's quite normal at the beginning of a new year and then kind of flip back around. Do not mistake that for being bearish, but I do think that we could come easily down to, I mean, 319, that doesn't do anything. Even below 317 doesn't do anything. Below 315, that's where things start to change a little bit. Um, so we've been moving this down, you know, each and every passing week. Overall, I'd remain bullish on it, but I do think that we probably, we probably pull back a little bit here. We do have some bearish divergence in play. So uh, I do think that 319 is actually quite likely, maybe even a little bit lower than that. Um, let's go check out. Uh, let's go check out Dixie, the dollar index. Um, 
how do we how do we close the week out on this baby yeah still still not looking like the picture of fitness but is this a front one of the 200 simple maybe maybe yes let's see what it looks like on a monthly i don't feel like i have a very good read on this this one's very difficult monthly looks bearish to me overall but does but does say that we probably bounce first and foremost probably probably bounce up bounce up back above 97 bucks um and then i'd actually be looking for some downside after that uh monthly mm, no i don't really have any, anything to say about it other than that um you know what? Actually, hold off. I, I don't. I don't think I, I. I don't think I have a good read on this right now. So I take back what I said. Um, <laughs> there are no take backs. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, let's see. Bitcoin dominance really quick. How's that one doing? Um, still, still very, very bullish on Bitcoin dominance here. Um, it does look like lower time frames might pull back a little bit more. Uh, if we do move below 69 spot 66, I would look for a full on pullback all the way down here, actually towards like 69 even. Um, but for now, it's still holding the 21 very, very violently. And as long again, as long as we don't even tick below 69.66, I am short term, medium term and long term bullish on the dominance, which means that I'm looking for a boo cake party on the altcoins once again, which hashtag fuck altcoins, <laughs> which Nimbo so eloquently put, um, which I am now adopting myself. Um, anyways, uh, let's go look at some Forex. How do we close out the week? Oh man, that, that, uh, that dollar yen coming down exactly to our target right around 107 spot seven. I would look for a little bit of a bounce here, probably back up to 108, 108 and a half region, and then probably more downside Long term, This looks like a, another lower high rejection by the 200 simple and probably longer term. We come down all the way to like 106 and a half, uh, pound yen. Uh, down as well. Uh, we did get so we got we got the bounce that we we're looking for this week. Now I am looking for downside. This is a lower high as well. Hidden bearish divergence over the long term, long term downtrend on a weekly rejection by the 200 simple and 200 X benchmark average. And I do think that you know over the next couple of months we come down to like like 138 or something. Uh, what else we have? Euro dollar. What's this one doing? Euro dollar kind of with an anemic close to the week. Um, I would focus on the monthly here. I do think that this was a pullback to likely buy. Uh, and I would remain short term, medium term bullish on it as long as we remain above 111. As long as it maintains above 111, I do think that it is likely to kind of work its way back up towards like 113, 113 and a half uh, over the long term. Um, what else do we have? Uh, I guess we can very briefly look at Ethereum and Litecoin just to come up with a little bit more of a bias and then we'll then we'll cut this bitch off. Um, Ethereum, uh, uh, resilient here, uh, uh, very, very close to making another higher high. If it does, if Bitcoin takes a leg up to like 75, I'd be looking for Mr. Buterall to make a leg up to like 145. Uh, Litecoin, same thing. Um, if, if, if Bitcoin takes off here, I would look for Litecoin to reach towards $47. So uh, it is looking like the alt want to extend a little bit here. So I do put the, I do put the statistics a little bit more on the side of extension. Let's go look at statistics besides my, besides my stupid opinion on it. It's like, she like look at it distilled into uh, historical volatility percentile uh, ranges uh, with regards to, well, sorry. Uh, my brain just broke. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so what we're looking at right here is we're looking at the range. I'm just looking at this massive girthy green dildo, and that's why it threw me off. Um, uh, so we're looking at the ranges, obviously, with regards to historical volatility percentile, and we are looking at the first innovation, which is now the top side of it is right around that last prior high, a little bit above 75.50. So it is actually within striking distance today. Um, so I do think that 75, 75.50 is actually is actually okay is is actually okay today. If we do move to the downside, though, remember. Um, you know, 70, 7,200 would be very likely, but actually I think we'd probably pop back down to 71. We don't really change structure until we break 71 to be fair. Um, so fair enough, you know, the probabilities are actually a little bit more on the, on a test of the top side of the resistance. Doesn't say that we, doesn't imply that we do get above there, but does imply that we will see resistance around there. Um, you know, further outside of that, it's very unlikely that we move below, you know, 7,000 or above 70, basically above 76 today. Don't think that's very likely. Um, but for right now, you know, the top side of the first navigation, which is, you know, within the 68% chance of likely to happen uh probably you know is, is saying that we probably do test it a little bit to the upside i'm curious what the lower term time frames say yeah lower term time frames kind of curling up here as well um we do see the second standard deviation coming in right around 7500 on the four hour which is right in line right in line with that same area that we're looking at uh, uh also our prior high right around here and uh that would be uh, actually less than five percent chance to happen today but to get above today but uh you know we're talking about a four hour here. So we get multiple four, we get what, uh, six, four hours within one day of trading period. So we're actually about to get another one in about uh, three minutes and 46 seconds. Anyways, um, 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 all righty. 
Uh, let's go look at the Bitcoin VWAP ratio. It is still bearish. It's actually turned down a little bit more. So I would still be overall cautious. I am not like full on macro bullish on Bitcoin anytime soon. Um, I, well, could be, I mean, depending upon how Bitcoin moves, but the areas that we're looking for, again, still very well defined. Um, I want to briefly look at the uh, volume profile um, for this price action here. I want to see if uh, we, you know, we, we've already looked at the downside, of course, um, you know, looking at this, this higher value node right here, but to the upside, we do see interest right around the 200 simple right here. Now I do want to, I, I guess I'll kind of like end with this and then wrap it up. Um, you know, from a moving average perspective, we're still not looking all that hot. Very, very similar to what we saw in May of 2018. We got the death cross right here between the green and the purple. We got all lower peers moving below higher peers right here with the cyan and the purple. We get Bitcoin below all major moving averages. All major moving averages have negative slope, and then the 200 simple curls down. Bitcoin is trending as long as we are closing below the yellow 20 minus moving average on a daily total closing basis. So, very, very similar uh, signature to what we see right here. First things first, we actually see major rejection of 200 simple, major rejection of 200 simple. Boom. Next piece. Death cross, next piece, all lower periods below higher periods. Next piece, all major moving averages have negative slope, but Bitcoin is actually not below the 21 exponential moving average today. Um, we actually closed above it yesterday night and that was Friday. That was, you know, a legitimate day of trading. Um, so do we have, you know, a little bit of a stutter step within this region and then mount another, you know, upside attempt? Uh, maybe to the 200 simple, which by the way, would be directly in line with this long-term downturn resistance line, which would be directly in line with that next proverbial targeted region between about 84 and 8,500 ish region. somewhere right around here. Well, over time, yes, you could kind of extrapolate that through, especially if Bitcoin, you know, spends a little bit of time within this region and that gives that this one time to kind of curl down you know, another consideration here. So, um, if Bitcoin really does blast off to the upside, I, I, I would be looking somewhere right around there on a pretty girthy uh, dildo. Anyways, um, okay. All right, what else do we wanna show? I think that's about it. We'll go back down to the lower time frames because I suppose that's where the fun is gonna be had today. Lower term time frames looks to me like a symmetrical triangle. Um, golden cross in the hourly, so we're going moon mode, baby. Uh, just kidding, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, but hey, you know, an hourly dollar close above, let's call it 7,400. And yes, I would look for extension to probably like 75, 7550 in this region right here in line with the next sort of descending trend line. I think which is actually about 7550 ish region. Um, uh, to the downside, if we do break this to the downside, if we do break this to the downside, I would be looking for a move down here towards a little bit below 7,200. And I'd probably look for continuation after a small bounce at 7,200 down to 7,100. 7,100 is critical though. As long as Bitcoin holds 7,100, it's, you know, it's, you can make an excuse for it for still some more presumed upside. But the second that we break it on, on especially like a, you know, a higher time frame, uh, that's when I will be once again, looking for trend to emerge to the downside. This is going to really start to look like a setting triangle on the two day. And, uh, we'll be looking for resolution, you know, coming into like the end of next week, essentially. So, um, a lot of things to be aware of here. Again, it's a weekend. I'm not trading this. I'm, I'm happy to just be a watcher, voyeuristic price action. I want to wish that the trend, that may the trend be with you. And also uh, remind you that uh, that the jewel is uh, is back on, is, is back online. So um, uh, really, really looking forward to that. Um, anyways, uh, other than that, I think that's about it for me. This video's already been 40, 36 minutes long. I'm hungry. I'm hungry as fuck, actually. I'm about to destroy a buffet. And uh, with that said, Wishing you well, as always. Wish you the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest because I think I did forget earlier this uh, earlier this uh, this stream. By the way, we just saw the four-hour close. Okay, let's actually stay here for a second. We saw the four-hour close above the 200, uh, 200 exponential mean average. I, I, I do think that we get a test of the upside here. Um, let's see how that actually changes the range here. Um, that didn't really change all that much, to be fair. All right, well, that's, uh, that, that pretty much does it for now. Um, as always, wish you well. Take care, and until next time.